With the Indigo Disc DLC dropping in a few days, everyone is eagerly waiting to take screenshots and complain about trees online. As of writing this, many creators have spoke of their early experiences with the DLC, and we learn they all be wildly different from the Pokemon many knew. Most notably, it will be hard. I got Amore down to her last Pokemon before she won. She has a legit strategy. Carmine's team is difficult. In terms of a double battle, she really does have very thoughtful strategies to execute a double battle. Be prepared for things like Trick Room, Stealth Rocks, Protect, and the shenanigans that you'd usually find when you play a doubles battle online. Teams will be fully EV trained, use held items and strategies that immediately wipe you off the face of the planet. No longer can you simply have your overleveled Boingus click super effective move six times and the game forces you to use your brain. But how, might you ask? Hello, I'm C Buddy from Corsola Cove, a team of competitive Pokemon creators, and this is the Indigo Disc Crash Course. Now, let's get the Carparaja out of the trick room. Every trainer battle is now a double battle, and they are difficult. This isn't gonna be your Tate Liza or Rhyme. If you just go in with your story team, your funeral will be scheduled for December 14th, midnight universal time. But why go doubles? Why not just keep playing singles like the rest of the series? Well, Game Freak's motive is actually quite clear to finally start bridging the gap between the main game and the official competitive format, VGC. There are many reasons why the official format is in doubles, with its most enticing being its dynamic between players. In singles, you can either attack, set up, or switch to avoid an oncoming attack. Meanwhile, in doubles, your Charizard might beat my Lilligan, but what about that Rock-type Glamora next to Lilligan? Well, maybe with your Mamoswine you could take it out in one clean earthquake, but it's threatened by Lilligan's super effective attacks, which could be dispatched by Charizard, and in this state, what can we do? Charizard and Memoswine can both attack, but Lilligan takes out Memoswine first, leaving Glamora alone to take out Charizard. You could protect Memoswine, keep it safe, take out Lilligan and let Charizard go down and take out Glamora next turn, but what if they double protect? Now Mamoswine wasted its protect, leaving it vulnerable for Lilligan to take it out next turn. What we just did only used two aspects of a double battle, attacking and protecting. The Charizard player was already at a disadvantage, but if it were not for protect letting Mamoswine stall a turn, then neither side would have to play such a complex mind game. We are ignoring a billion of irrelevant mechanics here, because it would be information overload, so here are some fundamentals you should be aware of before going to school. On the topic of Protect, typically it's not on many players' radar, as you stall a turn and that's all. And in singles, it's often used to stall for toxic damage, leftover healing, or during the Gliscor incident. In doubles, however, there are twice the amount of actions coming from both sides, therefore the value of nullifying an attack becomes more valuable, as you can protect one from damage and either attack or set up or switch out with the other, buying you better positioning for the next turn. On the topic of attacks, There's more nuance in attacking than just doing damage. The most basic is simply attacking with both your Pokemon. But we can do a little better. You can double on the same Pokemon, forcing it to take massive damage and knocking it out before it could move, though it is inherently risky due to protect. Well, the smart fellows among you might suggest spread moves, moves that hit both opponents at once, and you'd be correct in its power. But you might not know that as a balancing act, spread moves only do 75% of the full damage. However, because you are only using one Pokemon to pressure both opponents, this leaves your ally free to either do more damage or provide support. Typically, you don't see them a lot, as using status moves means you aren't attacking, and when the balance of the main story is heavily skewed in favor of the player, you might not even notice what the gym leader clicked. But in a format where you can attack and do something else in the same turn, support moves are suddenly way more impactful, 
to the point where early route moves such as Howl and Leer have seen serious competitive use. Status moves generally fall under four categories, offensive support, defensive support, speed control and disruption. Offensive support lets your attacker do more damage, simple enough. The best example would be Helping Hand, where for one turn, your ally will do 50% more damage, often seen on supports that can't do damage themselves, like Clefairy, which excels as a defensive support. The purpose of defensive support is to keep your ally alive. Moves like Reflect or Light Screen and abilities like Intimidate and Friend Guard to reduce incoming damage, as well as the best defensive move, Follow Me, redirecting all attacks to the user, keeping the ally safe to attack or boost up. Speed control alone can determine the winner of a match. The goal is to make sure your team can move first, because if you knock out an opponent before they can move, they can't move anymore. This would be your Tailwind to double everyone's speed for 4 turns, or your Icy Wind to lower both of your opponent's speed, and Trick Room to reverse the speed order, letting slow and bulky sweepers move first. Finally, we have Disruption. These are more specific, but they all serve to stop your opponent from doing the things at once. The three most important being Fake Out, which stops one opponent moving on the first turn, Encore to punish passive players like Protect and Lock them away from attacking, and Taunt to stop the target from using all status moves, therefore unable to support its ally or play defensively without Protect. We've established the three main actions every Pokemon can do during battle, being one of offense, defense, and support. And just like the capitalist idea of specialization, most Pokemon are built to do one thing more than another, though often a good Pokemon is capable of doing two. For example, Ogopon and Amoongus are both popular grass types, and while they both fill similar roles, they function wildly differently and require different playstyles. Amoongus is the premier defensive support Pokemon. Not only does it have great bulk with an amazing defensive typing, it also keeps its ally safe by redirecting moves of Rage Powder, heal with Pollen Puff, keep itself alive through regenerator healing, and disrupt by putting opponents to sleep with Spore. The only drawback is its pitiful damage output, unlike Ogapon. With a good attack set, its masks boosting it even more and Ivy Cudgel's high base power, it feels built for damage. However, they also gave it Follow Me to redirect moves, and Terror with a Wellspring or Cornerstone mask can buff its defenses, letting it become an attention-worthy support as well. This is also why Iron Hands is so popular in the meta. It has a massive 140 attack stat for offense, incredible HP and defense along with Assault Vest let it take every hit, and it also has Fake Out to disrupt and buy a room for its ally. Speaking of Assault Vest... The final aspect of what makes a Pokemon is its held items. Depending on what it holds, it can drastically change how it functions on a team. You have the straightforward ones. Citrus Berry and Leftovers give you healing and longevity. Choice and type item boosts the holder's damage potential. Oh. And other utilities like Rocky Helmet for chip damage or Metal Head to block taunt once. Simple, right? Well, let's look at the Pokemon ever, Lanterous Ferian. Above average bulk, Great attack stats, decent speed, and intimidate and typing let its ally take less damage. If we give it an assault vest, suddenly attacking it with special attackers not affected by intimidate becomes more difficult, thus becoming a strong, bulky attacker. With a choice scarf, it can outspeed many threats, do big damage, and pivot with U turn and activate intimidate multiple times per game. With a choice band or life orb, its burst damage can even oko neutral targets. Focus Sash and Yachi Berry help keep it alive, Clear Amulet to make it difficult to lower its attack, Safety Goggles to ignore Amoongus, I could go on. Oh, and one more thing. In Scarlet and Violet, they changed a mechanic regarding single-use items in that it will be restored after it was consumed in battle. So using items like Throat Spray and Focus Sash has no drawback in the future, so go ham. We're going to skim through this part, because it's not really a necessity, more a luxury that helps, especially with how expensive they can be. Effort values, or EVs, are additional stat points that you can give to your Pokémon. While they are highly customizable, if you want to make your life a little easier, just know you can use 26 vitamins in two stats of your choice to max it out. If the Pokémon was used during the main story, it may have already gained some through battles, 
In this case, you can use EV reducing berries or the fresh start emoji to reset them. Then use the vitamins so you wouldn't waste any points. So, now that you're familiar with what makes a good Pokemon, it's time for you to build your own team. After all, it's your playthrough. We're only here to teach you how to not be annihilated with your favorites. That said, we do have a few Pokemon recommendations that could help you play better in double battles. Take it away, Boofles. Thank you so much for attending my presentation on Pokemon to help you survive school. All of these Pokemon are relatively easy to obtain in your copy of Scarlet and Violet and are organized from most offensive to most supportive. First up we have Palafin, and while it starts each battle week, switching it out activates its ability zero to hero. Hero form Palafin is some of the best stats in the game. Its 160 attack stat is uncontested in today's metagame, and when paired with Palafin's signature move Jet Punch, a 60 base power priority move, Palafin can dish out absurd damage while completely ignoring its speed stat. You could even give it Wave Crash to turn the Dolphin into an absolute nuke. If you're interested in VGC but don't know where to start, I recommend you use Palafin during your playthrough of the Indigo Disc, as it'll teach you deeper switching concepts. Kamo'o is one of the best setup Pokemon in VGC right now, and for good reason. Its access to Clangorous Soul sacrifices a mere 33% of its health in exchange for a boost in all of your stats, and if that wasn't enough, it can use Iron Defense to bolster its longevity and increase body press's damage. Thus, it works well with Pokemon like Sinistra and Clefairy, each of which help keep it alive. While its impact on VGC hasn't been felt in years past, its ability to terror lets it shed its debilitating dragon fighting typing and Dawn Steel instead. Next up is Dragonite, one of the most versatile Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet doubles. It can play very different roles on different teams. Want to run something bulkier to control speed and stop setup? Use multi-skill Tailwind and Haze. Want a deadlier hyper offensive core? Pair it with Chimpow and go to Choice Band to rend opponents' teams in twain. The choice is really yours. It's one of the best abusers of terrestrialization in the game, gaining a new stab option with Flying, important defensive utility with Steel, or boosting its extreme speed damage with Normal. Especially in the DLC where opponents will likely be lacking fully optimized teams, Dragonite can do whatever you need it to, making it a very good pick. Chandelure is extremely unique and uses its odd combination of traits to get work done. It's tied for the highest special attack stat in the game, letting it break through defensive walls and even threaten sweeps with Heat Wave. But it doesn't end there. Chandelure has access to the Trick Room, making it dangerous to leave alone. On slower teams, try running it to enable mods like Armor Rouge, Hatterene, or even Snorlax. On the flip side, Murkrow makes a good partner, as its access to Prankster Tailwind and Sunday Day allows Shandy to go on the offensive early. Since its debut in Generation 8, Grimstone has been a force to be reckoned with. Its ability prankster coupled with light screen or reflect let it reduce damage before your opponent can even throw out an attack. If you want to control the game in other ways, it has you covered. Priority Thunder Wave and Parting Shot let it spread annoying status and stat drops across your opponent's team while pivoting in and out. It could even learn Fake Out and stop teams from getting the upper hand on the first turn. It's no slouch offensively either. Grimstone's solid attack set of 120 lets it pack a punch with stab spirit break and lower special attack stats in the process. If you're worried about hyper offense teams getting in your way, this is an absolutely fantastic pick. Amoongus is one of, if not the most infamous Pokemon in VGC history. It's the best spore used in the game bar none, and even its low speed stat helps out as it can be a nuisance inside of Trick Room. It's not just a spore bot though. Rage Powder lets your redirect moves away from frailer Pokemon, and Pollen Puff heals your teammates for half of their health. Even though it can't fit a healing move onto its set, it doesn't need it. Regenerator gives it the chance to get back tons of HP while switching out, making sure the mushroom stays healthy at all times. In conclusion, there are a lot of strong Pokemon to use in the upcoming Indigo Disc DLC, many of which I wasn't even able to mention here. Don't be afraid to experiment with these strategies. That's what Pokemon's all about. Have fun with it. Thank you so much to Course Lico for having me on. It really is a pleasure. Back to you, C buddy. I didn't talk about Cloud Sand. And with that, hopefully you have a better understanding of double battles in preparation for the Indigo Disc. Perhaps you might have gained new perspectives for a mode many overlooked for years, and if you end up craving for more, you might fancy creators like Cybertron who break down top performing teams and provide a rental for you to use. After which, it might be time to take on the cruel world that is Battle Stadium. This is Seabody from Corsola Cove, and thank you for watching. Oh, mother f